Welcome back to Project 38, Rangers Procket here. And today, we're gonna show you how to camo a rifle. Stick around, and we'll show you how. Okay, before we get started, I uh, just want you to know that uh, this works with any type of rifle. It doesn't necessarily have to be a sport rifle like this, uh, AR type rifle. It can be a uh, super low end, it could be a high end. Whatever you have, it's all work the same. You can do this to your hunting rifles, do it to your 243, 30-06, just things you take out in the wood for a deer, bear, whatever you're hunting, it all works the same, the same principle. You can do it to a handgun, do anything you want to. Uh, this is my rifle, it is a premium rifle, and uh, it shoots good, it works very well. Um, kinda fond of it, I wanna know uh, we're gonna we're gonna paint the flip-up sights on it too. I want it to all match. We're gonna paint our red dot. Uh, we'll keep you along for every step of the way. Some of the things that we need to cover, uh, but you're gonna need some uh, rattle cans of camouflage paint. You're gonna need some masking tape to tape off stuff that you don't want paint getting into or on. And uh, pretty much it's just a fire for effect. So uh, stick around uh, Why I got you on here and why I'm thinking of it because I normally forget um, if you like what you're seeing on the channel consider subscribing um, I'd love to see my little channel grow pretty uh, it's pretty fun to do pretty fun to make and uh, just like to see it grow a little so share like subscribe leave comments uh, I reckon all those things help with the algorithms okay some of the materials we're going to be using first off we're going to be using some uh, rattle cans i'm doing three colors on mine uh rust-oleum you can see it's the camouflage paint so these are flat colors they're non-reflective and uh also uh, these bond very well to the plastic components on your rifle so if you're doing a sport rifle like i am and you've got some plastic pieces like your uh lower your mags are um um plastic whatever uh, this is stick to it so we're doing khaki deep earth and or deep forest and camo earth is what we're using also uh, we've got some trees here in the yard i believe these are leland spruces pretty common in our area for foliage going to use this for a little bit of highlight on there it looked pretty nice when it's done it's got a lot of texture to it i think think you'll like that it'll look really nice uh, also we've got some carbon brake cleaner uh, this uh we need that's paramount this is uh critical you've got to spray your rifle down if you don't get all your fingerprints off of it the oils oils from the last cleaning whatever uh, the paint won't stick there and it won't look real good and um also have if you don't have brake cleaner or a uh, carbon choke cleaner you can use brake cleaner or a mass airflow sensor cleaner this stuff dries super fast this is probably what i'll use because i like it better so we'll use this uh, if you're using masking tape or if there's things on your rifle that you're wanting to to not spray paint on then you'll need some masking tape and you'll need a sharp knife or something like that to work with so pretty much that's what we've got over here we've got our rifle set up here um i've got it suspended from the ceiling uh in a way that i feel is safe if you don't mind if your rifle uh smacks on the floor while you're doing this then don't hang it up good but if you don't want it to smack the floor really well and uh um if you don't want to jar its, its guts out and give it a battle scar later on then uh, that's all right with you we just want to uh we just want to show you how um i'm i'm not going to mask anything off on mine because it doesn't need it i'm gonna because i want the outside of my dust covers to be camo also uh later on i will pop these covers off and i'll hit the underside of them where it don't show and uh, this is a red anodized uh, uh bottom plate for your finger well uh it's enhanced a little bit better for gloves gloved hands and stuff like this i know that's anodized i'm still painting over that i knew it when i bought that uh to put on there that i would be painting it red doesn't make any difference to me um i'll be hitting my sights be getting both sides of this uh i may do a review on this uh red dot got this from tacticon uh, uh veteran owned veteran operated company uh, it's all made in the united states of america i've got this i co-witnessed this sometimes with a uh, magnifier so in that case i'd move this a little forward put the magnifier back here in the back 
and I like them. They're a match set from Tacticon. I really, really like them. I'm, I may do a review on that. Um, really nice, really nice things. Bare arms tactical on the flip up sights, uh, just from what I was wanting. I don't know that much about bare arms, but I was wanting a set of 45 degree um, sights. That way if the batteries go dead in the red dot, that you can always flip her over 45 degrees and you can still tap, tap, tap. And uh, you know, work on a building whatever it is that you're doing. But uh, I like these, don't know much about the company. There was at the right price when I was looking. Uh, I think it was the next day shipping is what sold me on them because I could get them faster. Uh, so the front and rear apertures on those. We're gonna be painting those. I've got this pulled out, dropped down all the way to the lowest setting on the, uh, or the longest setting on the, on the rear here. Uh, because I want all this painted, although I normally do fire it with it close in like that. But I want to make sure that everything is covered. So uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to get that going. And uh, we'll get some paint uh, shook up here just in a minute. And uh, we'll show you what to do. Uh, the color scheme that I chose to go with, uh, with the uh, light khaki and then the dark earth, uh, I'm going to paint this up like a coyote. Uh, in nature, you see a deer out in the woods, you see a coyote out in the woods. Their backs are dark colored, their bellies are light colors. Their light colored reflects the light back up off of them, it diffuses it, and the dark helps them blend in. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. This top section will be painted rather dark, the bottom section will be painted rather light, everything in the middle will be a blended, and um, it look real nice when it's done. Uh, if you got apprehensions to do this, then don't do it. It's entirely up to you. Um, I, I just wanna do it. It's my rifle and it's what I wanna do to it uh, because we know a painted rifle shoots better. Uh, anyway, so that's what we're going for. Um, also, this probably would be removable. Uh, don't know what it would do to the under finish. It's got a keratote, keratote? I always have trouble with that. Carat coat finish I'll put a line up somewhere about right here on what the correct spelling of that is how to spell it I would imagine that using these paints painting this on if you wanted to get this off that you could probably get a paint stripper and strip it back down to the standard issue black um, black is fine there's nothing wrong with this being black I just want to paint it camo if uh, something comes to it that we need to get out and travel and do things, it would just be nice to blend in with the rest of my environment. Uh, if you see me not, you can shoot me not. Um, so I always uh, desire the advantage. So let's move on a little bit further in this process. Okay, awesome, here we are. Um, getting ready to degrease this. We're just gonna spray it over anything that needs scrub. We've just got some regular shop towels here scrub anything down we just want to remove all the oil that might be remaining on that from your last cleaning uh, and make sure you get your fingerprints off of it so everything sticks very well uh, so everything looks good my dust cover is closed um, I just think that's a, a wise thing to do and I didn't have to tape it off because of that now I told you I'm going to use the mass airflow sensor cleaner and uh, as I was shaking it up and getting ready to go I found out some awesome facts about this stuff number one it's plastic safe and increases horsepower and reduces rough idle. Uh, it decreases hesitation and pinging. Uh, I, I think that's, um, I think that just proves that this stuff in a painted rifle uh, just makes it run a little better. And if I can use this here and um, increase the horsepower of my rifle, then yes, I wanna use that. If it reduces rough idle, yes. If it decreases hesitation, yes, this is it. And then I also see here, that increases uh, rounds per trigger, or uh, wait a minute, that's miles per gallon. Well, that'll probably still do the same. So we just wanna make sure we're good, use this in a well-ventilated area or don't, just whatever feels good to you. And we wanna work our way down so we any contaminants will fall off of it. This uh, evaporates super, super fast. And uh, we just wanna clean that up right here. And uh, you may think, well, you're using a lot. Well, yeah, I want to use a lot. I want it to look nice. And if you've got uh, additional magazines and you want to paint those, then, you know, you can just lay those out and 
paint them with about the same scheme. Just keep in mind that on your uh, magazines, you, you want to paint it dark and middle. You don't want to put much light on the top of it uh, since it's down on the lower end of this. And uh, notice also that I'm not touching it with my fingers. I'm touching it with the cloth because I don't want to retransfer oil from my hand back onto it. I don't know if you can see that, but this wood that's dropping off of it is, is uh, dark. So I, I felt like we've worked the contaminants down the way we needed to. Okay. I like that. We'll give it a few minutes to dry up. I'm going to put a fan on it because it's super hot in here today. Put a fan on it. I want to get that done. Uh, this step is critical, folks. It's critical that you make sure you get this degrease properly. And uh, better material you use, the better your results. Okay, I'm going to start with the bottom edge of this. And uh, I'm going to do it. It's go time. So we're going to start with the uh, camo khaki on this. And we're going to do the underside of it. Super light coat. You don't have to to gob this off or nothing. If you put too much, it just uh, won't look right. Just remember, I'm painting this for my environment. So you paint it to what your environment is. If you live in the uh, where it's uh, snowy most of the year, then you might want to paint it white and uh, use a accent color, you know, for something else. Okay, so there's some of that. And here's the dark color. This, it dries crazy, crazy fast. So, I just want to try to keep it from moving. Pretty good. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Dark on top. Light on the bottom. Cleaning it is critical. Painting it, getting your colors just right, that part's not critical, folks. As you carry these and as you get out and shoot them and play with them, your finish is going to start to wear off so that's all part i'm going to shake this other can up and come back in with a highlight okay i don't want to flood and saturate this whole thing with the green so i'm just going to come in here and uh give it some of this
really liking that. It's really coming into some colors there. You can start to see those colors. So you've got your darks, your greens, and your tans. From the top, we're still real dark. From the bottom, we're still real light. So it looks pretty good. So we're gonna keep going there. I'm gonna come back and give a little bit more light to it. Hit some light spots on top. You just want to break it up and uh, make it look good. Is moving. See how that gives it that color right there to break it up? That looks nice. Give it a little pattern. So all we're gonna do, everything that we put on there, we'll break that pattern up out in the in life. It's lights against darks, darks against light, but you want to keep in mind you want this edge here, you want this side of it to be dark, the underside of it to be light. This gives it the effect where you got dark and light, like there's light shining down through it, and it just breaks it up just so tremendously. Swinging.
doing going back and forth doing dark doing light going in between doing some more dark doing some more light it gives it shadow and depth so it, it looks like like that one is real deep this one is more light it's deep and in front deep and in front and that's what we're looking for we're, we're looking for for depth we want to change the look of it we want to change this thing from looking like a rifle to looking like shadows in a foliage to blend in that you can't even see it. I had a piece of netting put up that I was going to use for it and put uh, make it look like snake scales, but... Uh, of course, when I finally had time to do the video, I couldn't find it. So it's, it is what it is. Now, my final thing I'm gonna do is come back with the dark. And do some of the darkest ones. I'm gonna get me a little fresh sprig off of that. Final steps. Dark color, standing way back. Give it some depth. Give it some darkness. And my um, light, I'm gonna come into the bottom of it. Hit that bottom one more time from a distance. Okay, now we'll let that dry. All right, well, I think that'll just about do it for this project right here. I think it turned out fantastic, and um, we're going to continue to let this dry. Um, if I think about it, I'll insert some steel photos that I have of it in some brush uh, here, different places in my yard to highlight the way the sunlight's coming down through and how it just blends in and kind of disappears. Um, I wish I'd thought to do that before I'd painted it, uh, to do it black so you could tell what a black rifle would look like compared to um, the one that's camoed up. If I can find some images online, I will try to insert those too if I can do it and get away without infringing on somebody's copyright laws. Um, another thing is if you want this finish to last a long time, if you're going to handle it a lot, if you like to take your rifle out and run it a whole lot, feed it, uh, this will wear... Uh, rather quickly, especially if it's run up, rubbing up against you, rubbing in your gear, getting it out of your bag, everything like that. Uh, to make it last a little bit longer, you can get some clear paint and come over this, but make sure that it's flat. Make sure there's no glare, no sheen, no nothing on it. They do make that, and you could uh, spray a couple light coats, two or three over that, and that would just clean it up and uh, really protect your finish and make it last a lot longer. One other thing I failed to mention was on your, if you got iron sights like I do on your front sight and your back sights, um, if you mask those off, great. You're ahead of the game, then pull them off or whatever. But anyway, you want to make sure that you come back in here with some black and blacken these uh, front and rear sights up uh, where you look through it. Because if you don't, it's going to make it incredibly difficult for you to, to capture your target in there, whether you're target shooting, if you're using this for game, whatever it is. Um, you just wanna uh, make sure that your sights are nice and black and that you didn't take that away. Uh, one advantage of that, you just wanna uh, blacken the sight towards you, not away from you, uh, because even if it's still in its black condition facing you, then it can't be seen from the other side. So just something to keep in mind. You want to blacken your sights, uh, mask off anything um, that you don't want sprayed. So 
we did that. I just did this one mag inside the weapon while I was doing it. Um, I may do the other ones at a later time, may make a different video on that. And then my strap, it being a fabric material, um, I'll show you some steps how to do that. Uh, just to make it look good and, and make everything match, keep it up along the way. But uh, I just encourage you today that if you don't know the Lord, um, you need to. He is our only means of eternal life in heaven. It's through Jesus Christ. And um, if we're not ready to meet him, friend, uh, we're, we're going to be a, some miserable people after a while. I encourage you to find an altar somewhere, seek the face of God, pray, ask him to forgive you. The scripture says um, uh, that if we believe with our heart and we confess with our mouth that Jesus is the Lord, then we can be saved in that. It, it, sometimes it's just believing. Uh, sometimes we need to see, but uh, it's believing. Having faith that you're saved, that you're born again, you've made it right, that your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I encourage you to do those things. If you're already saved, then good. Just hang in there like a hair in a biscuit and uh, endure, endure to the very end. We appreciate you for coming along this ride with us uh, show you how to simply paint this up we'll get some more photos of this post these up if i can figure out how to do it appreciate you stopping by project 38 i'm ranger sprocket we'll see you next time